Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And today I want to talk about the uh, T2, T205 gold border cards. And specifically I'm going to talk about Mordecai Brown. Uh, so I'm going to show you Mordecai Brown and then we're going to talk about the backs of the cards. Uh, so we'll first take a look at this Mordecai Brown card. And this is the T205. And um, you know, they, they come in two different versions and I've shown that before, but I really want to talk about Mordecai Brown personally, because Mordecai Brown's name was Mordecai Peter Centennial Brown. And I'm going to read a few things about him. He was uh, nicknamed Three Finger Brown. Um, and what happened to him was that uh, he was one of the first players that actually played, not, not one of the first players, but one of the players that played both in the uh, early eight, uh, the late 18th century and, and early 19th century. So he played during the dead ball era. And what happened to him was that he lost parts of his two fingers on his right hand in the process uh, during a, uh, an accident on the farm with uh, grain. You know, he was uh, putting the uh, stuff in the grinder or whatever, and he got his, he lost a uh, parts of two fingers. So he lost his index finger. And this was when he was five years old. So he was a, a little kid helping out on the farm. And then after that, you know, he said he was feeding material into the farm's feed chopper. He slipped in his hand, was mangled by the knives, severing must, mo, much of his index finger and damaging the others. Then the doctor repaired the rest of his hand as best as he could. But while it was still healing, um, the injury was further aggravated by a fall that he took, which broke several finger bones. And since you know, they were never reset properly, especially the middle finger, uh, his hand was kind of um, distorted. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a picture of his hand and how he threw the ball here real quick. So this is Mordecai Brown's hand. See, he lost a couple of fingers, and then the middle finger was uh, never set properly after it broke. So that's how he pitched. That's a picture of his hand. And um, I'll show you another picture, you know. And like that, he became a Hall of Fame pitcher that... Uh, was one of the best pitchers in his days. You know, he learned to pitch by throwing rocks. And, um, you know, over time he became a, uh, uh, a baseball player and he was a third baseman in, in semi-pro baseball in 1898. And then when his team's pitcher failed to appear for the game, Brown was put in to pitch. And, uh, you know, the players in the league quickly noticed the spin and movement created by, by Brown's unusual grip. So, it, you know, Brown's uh, great nephew said, it didn't only curve, it curved and dropped at the same time. So it made it extremely hard to hit. And if you did hit it, you hit it into the ground because you couldn't get under it. So after a spectacular minor league career in Terre Haute, uh, you know, in 1901, then he moved up to the, to the major leagues in 1903. And uh, he played until, he, until 1916. And he became really uh, he, one of the best players in the history of the Cubs organization. He's actually ra ranked the eighth best Cub in history. Remember, the Cubs have been around you know, for many, many years. Here's a little Cub logo on the card. And I just love this card, bright red. And, um, you know, he became a spectacular pitcher. And he actually, um, one of the things I, I like is that in, 19, in late 1909, uh, Brown was on a, uh, on a team that played some games in Cuba. And he went out there and, and played with the Cuban players out there which was great because, you know, he played with a lot of the Negro Leaguers and things back in those days and a lot of the great Cuban players. And uh, he planned to spend the entire winter there, but 
he had to return home because he, he caught a mysterious disease. So, um, you know, he, he came back. But the main thing that I, I like to talk about here is that this guy was a, uh, you know, a really a great in the, uh, he never lost a, a game in the, uh, what do you call it, in, in, uh, in, in, in the uh, World Series. And he ended up beating uh, Christy Mathewson in the World Series. And not only was he a great pitcher, I mean, he, he went, uh, he went, his war was 58.3, which uh, for a pitcher is great. He won 239 games and he lost 130. His ERA was 2.06, lifetime ERA, 2.06. And, uh, and he pitched over 3,000 innings. He had over 1,300 strikeouts. Um, and uh, the other thing about him is that he also was a reliever at the time. And uh, he led the league in, in saves four years in a row from 1908 to 1911. He led the league in saves. And even during that era, uh, you know, his record, his, his record was... Awesome, you know, in, in uh, 19, I want to read you some of his wins and losses. 1904, he was 15 and 10. 1905, 18 and 12. 1906, he was 26 and 6. 1907, 20 and 6. 1908, 29 and 9. 1909, he was 27 and 9. 1910, he was 25 and 14. 1911, 21 and 11. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six years in a row. He won 20 games. Uh, he led the league in innings pitched. One year, his ERA, you know, you talk about Bob Gibson. You know, one year, his ERA was 26 and 6 with a 1.04 ERA. You know, so, and the other things I like about this card is this is the first year, the T205 was the first year that they had the stats in the back of the cards. So you can see here, you know, Mordecai Brown, the Cubs' famous pitcher, had several years in the minors before he joined the Chicago team. Uh, the first two years he was with them, he did very fair work, but it was in 1906 that he made it evident what a great pitcher he was by winning 26 games out of 32. The three years that the Cubs won the National League pennant and running 1906, 1907, 1908. He had winning percentages of 813, 769, 760. And you can see his record right there. 29 and nine, 27 and nine, and 25 and 14, 19, eight, nine, 10. And, and this is an honest long cut, which is different than the regular ones. So I'll talk about the backs in a minute, but I wanted to show you Mordecai Brown, and I want to talk about Mordecai Brown, Three Fingers Brown of the Chicago Nationals, because he was an incredible pitcher, and uh, not only, uh, like I said, a, a starting pitcher, but he was a relief pitcher, and um, <clears throat> he was, you know, and I'll show you right here, Mordecai Brown, the top 100 Cubs of all time, he was number eight. And the Cubs have an incredible history. So you can imagine, to, you know, especially with just hitters and all that. So the other thing I want to talk about is the bats. And um, I want to give credit to Net54 on this because if you don't, if you want to really know about the um, you know, the, the, the real vintage cards like this and cards from the 1800s and things like that, the experts are all on that 54. You know, you have people in there that have been there for, have been collecting for years, you know, like uh, Ted Z and people like that. But, so I wanna show you here a list of the rare backs. So the question was asked here, which are the rarest backs for T205s? And this is what, was posted. So the most common are on the bottom, as you can see, the Piedmont, Polar Bear, Sweet Caprols, Hassans, and then the Honest Long Cut, kind of in the middle, that's the one I got here. And then you got all the way up to the, the toughest 
by far are the Drummond, the Hindu, the Broadleaf, and the Piedmont Factor 42 in American Beauties and Cycles. So as you can see, and uh, you know, th this is a great source of um, you know, information here. And I will also uh, share here um, the T205, the, the uh, T206 grab axe. So I'll just show you that list, but that's a long list, but I'm gonna show you that list real quick. And this is the T206 rear backs. And this comes from Leon, who is the owner of the uh, forum. So these are some of the, uh, the list of the rarest, the Ty Cobb back, the Old Mill of Southern, Southern Leaf Brown, the Lennox, the Broadleaf, the Drum, the Use It, the Hindu, uh, Broadleaf, or you can go back, Carolina Brights. Then you got the uh, Tolstoy, uh, Pizza Principe de Gales. Uh, then you got the Polar Bear, Sweet Caprol, the Piedmont. So Piedmont, Sweet Caprol, Polar Bear, Old Mill, Sovereign. Those are pretty much, you know, scarce, but those are the, the most common backs and then you get up to the uh, American Beauties and Tolstoy's and and all that so any if you want uh, any more information on things like that the uh, the rare backs for T206 is T205s I suggest you go to uh, net 54 so that's what I wanted to show you guys on this so this is I'll show you the honest long cut back and this is I I'm not sure, there's different factories. So I haven't really looked into it yet, but it's factory number 50, somewhere in New York. And that this came out of the Honest Long Cut Cigarettes. And this is the uh, T205, Mordecai Brown, Gold Border card in a VGX4. So just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks everyone for watching my videos. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, have an awesome, awesome day. This is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. Please like and subscribe if you, if you I would appreciate it. Thank you guys.